gagatma gagati vidis, the jarati vidis. Dharma to the is still to come, and the sun must still rise from the west. But these two must come together. He said, if this one comes first, the other one will come shortly after. Huh? These two. Dharma to the the sun rising from the west. And so, Kiyama commenced in the lifetime of the Prophet. But if the jar is released, where is he? If he is on earth, where is he? The Prophet said that is not to Islam, when the jar is released, he live on earth for 40 days, one day like a year, one day like a month, one day like a week, and the rest of his days like your days. I believe, and Allah knows best, that I am perhaps the first to have interpreted that hadith. There it is on the cover of this book. Praise is due to Allah. When his day is like our day, he'll be in our dimension of time. Therefore, we can see him. He'll be a young man, he'll be a Jew, he'll have curly hair, he'll be powerful, but I'm saying nothing about his eyes. <laughs> where would he be? In Jerusalem, ruling the world from Jerusalem. But where would he be when he's released on earth in a day like a year, and then a day like a month, and then a day like a week? Where? Of course, not in our dimension of time, so we can't see it. There is a hadith in Sahih Muslim we call the hadith of Tamim Udari, which gives us the answer. We don't have the time to give you that hadith in detail, but you go into the book and you find it. The hadith informs us that when the jar is released on earth, it's going to be on an island, number one. Number two. The island will be about one month's journey by sea from the Arab world. Number three, the island will be an island that conceals its true identity. Number four, the island will be an island that specializes in spying and espionage. Which island is it? This is my answer. You don't have to agree with me. But if you say I'm wrong, you must tell me what is the right answer before you believe. In October of 1917, it is the island of Britain which issues the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration. That it is intention of His Majesty's government, let's make it His Majesty's Godless government, to work for the establishment of a Jewish national home in the Holy Land. Strange thing, isn't it? Number two. In December of 1917, the British army defeats the Turkish army, liberates the Holy Land for the Jews. Number three, it is the island of Britain which rules over the Holy Land from 1917 to 1948 on a mandate conferred by the League of Nations. And during that time, the Jews are allowed to return. They eventually reclaim the land. Something that the Ottoman Islamic Empire never allowed. Number four, it is the island of Britain which presides over the birth of the Jewish state of Israel in 1948. I've only given you four. There are more. There is more evidence than this. But you might want to go and do some research now. <laughs> you might want to go back and study British history one more time as I am doing now. Go back and re-study all that I studied before. Re-study it now. I come to the conclusion that the island is Britain. That when the jar is released on an earth, in a day which is like a year, and commences his mission to impersonate the Messiah, is from Britain. And he launches his attack. And I notice that he who wants to rule the world, and deliver to the Jews rule over the world causes Britain to become ruling state in the world. I have so much more I'd like to talk about Britain, but time is against me. One day Britain is no longer the ruling state in the world. Britain is replaced by the United States of America. 
I want to advise those of you who are serious as thinkers to do what I'm doing now. To examine minutely and carefully the process of change through which the United States of America replaced Britain as the ruling state of the world. How long did it last? And what was the process of change? This is your homework. When the United States became the ruling state in the world, then the United States also maintained that mysterious, mystifying, puzzling, baffling, enigmatic relationship with Israel that Britain had. You can't explain the American relationship with Israel with any of the normal tools of political analysis. No. Only the Quran and a man named Muhammad al Islam can explain it. So don't ask your foreign minister. <laughs> don't ask the diplomats. Because they can't, they can't answer it. The United States is the first country in the world to recognize Israel it was born. The United States provides massive financial assistance to Israel, massive economic aid to Israel, massive military aid to Israel, massive transfer of military technology from, from the front door and from the back door. Israel becomes a powerful state. Israel becomes a nuclear state armed with nuclear weapons to match Europe. Israel becomes a thermonuclear state. Israel today has the capacity to destroy every European capital. And Israel has won. We're not going down without taking the world down with us. We have the power to take the world down with us. That's how powerful Israel is. And so my answer is that when the jar is in a day which is like a month, it is the United States of America which is its headquarters. I want to suggest to you that we are now located in that moment in time when the state of Israel is about to replace the United States of America as the ruling state in the world and the child will now enter into a day which is like a week. We are now passing through the greatest drama that mankind has ever experienced in history. All that I have done is to give, in you, to give you the framework from the Qur'an which you can now apply to try to understand what is happening in the world. Tomorrow, we will be in the grave. Tomorrow you must use this to understand and to analyze what is happening in the world using the framework of the Qur'an. Now, the war on Iraq is meant to be on behalf of the Jewish state of Israel. Why is the war being waged now? Why not before? Because, as I said, we are now entering into the period where the day will be like a week like a month will end. But I noticed that this war was planned long ago. And I noticed that they made the attempt long ago. I could not help noticing because I was resident in New York City. September 11th was not the first time that they attempted to blow up and break down the World Trade Center. Twin Towers. I was there in New York when the first attempt was made. I believe it must have been January 1992. It was winter time. And guess what? There was a Republican administration. A Republican administration. It was Bush Senior. And guess what? There was a Jew who was identified to be part of the planning committee. And then he disappeared. And guess what? There were a number of Arabs who were duped into this. They didn't know what they were doing. And the rider van was packed 
with explosives and taken into the basement of the World Trade Center and then exploded. But the buildings did not collapse. Six floors were damaged, but the building did not collapse. 